way to talk and there's a way you ought to talk. So it's not because I don't know what I want to say. It's that I need to say it the way God wants me to articulate it. Are you with me this morning, please? All right. So in this mood and at this time, I want us to just, can we just pray in the Holy Spirit just a short while, just before we go into the word? Can we just pray together in the Holy Spirit just in five minutes or in fact less, maybe 60 seconds? Let's just pray together. Let's just pray together. Let's, let's just build the momentum together. Please pray, pray for me. Pray that the Lord will speak through me words of life. Let's pray together if you don't mind. La zotra di sto prake di zofrani zosa vija la hata. Ko kati barado zopre di sto peke tani kizosa. Mashata da da predi kozoso di bojala katanda de batanya. No se keli bala bala batanda da bra. Ruje kedi babre di bozosa di batanda di bala katanya da ba. Lisopra kataba di ada bojote di ada. Zunga gando dondo dumbe rizo zovo roja tiki tindo dobe zala kashada Reka tabro di zobrana matamre di bushone ketam In Jesus name we pray So father I'm asking for utterance one more time I give you the praise we've spoken about it let your name be glorified In Jesus name we pray Amen Alright people of God turn your bibles with me firstly this morning As our core text Genesis chapter 1 beg your pardon yeah let's do chapter 1 and then we come to chapter 2 verse 26 chapter 1 verse 26 please let's follow together take notes right let's make this very interesting Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and God, let's read it together if you don't mind. Verse 26. One, two, go. Everyone, let's try it, please. If you don't mind, online and on site, let's go. One, two, go. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth verse 27 please so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them verse 28 and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth say big amen. amen if you study what we've been trying to do in the last couple of weeks starting from january we spoke and started the year about certain things that are important for the success of 2022 the objective was to set us straight in emotion that I personally believe that the Lord will have us move towards. I'd like you to please pay attention. Now, if you look at it very well, we went from there and spoke to another subject in the month of that same January. We spoke about the spirit life transactions. We talked about transactions of the spirit. We spoke about the spirit life conference. And indeed, it was a very good one. Then we contemplated in the month of February what we called the social capital and lasting relationships. These whole conversations are not just an attempt, a sincere attempt to just speak nice words and you know nice sound bites and all of that. And this month again, we'll be looking at the subject titled um, Motions and Movements of the Spirit motions and movements of the spirit praise the lord now if you look at it the motions and the movements of the spirit may sound like 
a very generic term but there is a definite objective that i believe that the spirit of god will have me achieve through the preaching and the teaching of his word let me start by saying that some of the things you'll be hearing in this month's discussion may not just be an attempt to because there'll be a lot of prophetic conversations inside where we'll be prophesying praise god but much more than sounding very nice sounding very whatever the attempt is to produce the righteousness of god's spirit so that we can align up with the will of god so that we can do that which will be consistent with god's master plan and maybe more than any other thing we can find our own role in the plan of god for our lives it is important to say that god has a plan and in this series my intention is not to sound different or sound like as if i have something controversial to say i think i've outgrown the level of trying to be noticed or saying something different because it is controversial or something i've outgrown that level i sincerely want you to hear what i'm saying document it prayerfully go home and consider it and see whether it is the will of god check it in your spirit don't just take my word for it go back home and think about what pastor said and then you find out maybe god will speak to you more clearly and if peradventure what i'm saying to you today i get to understand more truth about it than i do presently i have accepted the responsibility and the humility to return to you to say these things and correct myself if necessarily but i say these things today under the influence of the holy ghost i say them under the power of the almighty god i say them as one who has submitted himself to doctrine and the righteousness of the spirit i say them as one who has obtained grace and found favor before god i say them as somebody who understands the things of the spirit and the greater purposes of god i'm not here to just elocute words i'm here to declare things that i believe is consistent with the will of god so please if you hear these things and you don't understand them take them first put them in their hand go and think about it and then let's talk about it maybe at the midweek bible study session or perhaps any other time god grants us grace but please i want you to open up your heart listen to the conversation and find yourself in the discussion can i hear your believing amen, amen. now we will be talking about motions of the spirit and on wednesday i tried introducing us to genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 2 the word of god says there it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and says and the earth was without form and void and say and the spirit of god moved upon the surface of the deep and then god said let there be light and i was trying to introduce to us the fact that god in his infinite wisdom will always be a creative god when the bible therefore says let us make man in our image god was having a mind to make a creative man do you agree with me on that if the god of genesis 1 1 was a creative god then the man of genesis 1 26 that was made in god's image must be a creative man do you understand what i'm trying to say here so what i'm trying to say is that god made you and i creative you are a creative somebody look at the person for me beside you third person you are a creative somebody <laughs> I wanted to say with an attitude you know that 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 somebody i put there was for effect okay so look at the person again say pastor say i should tell you that you are a creative somebody <laughs> yeah you are a creative somebody why genesis 1 1 says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth when god creates something it is for a reason god creates not for nothing god creates for something and the god that we see in the bible created things very definitely and he created them for something in that same scripture we see the representation of the trinity god the the father that's god almighty um el shaddai uh, um adonai you know we see also that the spirit of god and then we see the word of god it says and god said let there be light so we'll come to all that conversation in its details and its granular forms later on but i wanted to observe that there was somebody introduced in verse 2 the person is the spirit of god everyone say the spirit of god so we are told that god was the creator but then he introduces quickly in verse 2 that there's someone called the spirit of god and then he says that spirit of god 
was the one that moved upon the surface of the deep and then when God now spoke it was seen by understanding and inference there safely so that it was the spirit of God that executed the things that God said so though God was the one talking but the spirit of the one of God was the one moving now somebody said God was talking the spirit of God was moving never in life would you see or throughout scriptures did we see a place where the spirit of god was not active the spirit of god is always moving he is always creating something he is always busy even on earth right now god is not physically present even in christ jesus god is present by his spirit the bible says may the grace of our lord jesus christ may the love of god and the fellowship the the, the part of God that makes God relevant on the earth today is the Spirit of God. Somebody said the Spirit of God is always moving. Say it again. Say the Spirit of God is always moving. You will remember this conversation, this song perhaps, if you are an old school person. It says, all over the world, the Spirit is moving. Have you, do you know that song? All over the world, as the prophet said it to be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. As the waters covers the... He says, all over the world, the Spirit of God is moving. You hear some stories in Japan, how the Spirit of God did something. You hear the stories of um, the Spirit of God in, in, Euro, in, in Ukraine, for example. The Spirit of God is doing something. You hear the stories of the Spirit of God in Africa. The Spirit of God is doing... The Spirit of God is always the moving Spirit of God. And so when we title it the motions and the movements of the spirit of god i have an intention and that is to move us towards a particular thought and we will get there very shortly now look at it in the book of genesis you notice that god in his wisdom created man and soon enough please follow me soon enough man you know was created in the garden i don't know how long it took for man to enjoy himself in the garden but god specifically introduced two trees that we are told of he says you can eat of all the trees in the garden but he specifically pointed to one who can remind me the name of that tree any bible study eh? i can't hear you well the tree of no there's no tree of life and death oh. let me hear you well what are you saying please because that's how we'll be thinking that you know this thing and then you'll be saying if you write Bible now, we would ask you. <laughs> oh yeah, if you know the answer, or you and your friend know the answer, oh, all of you say it together. What tree? The tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everybody say the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Is that what we all agree that is in scriptures? So I don't need to go back and read it. That's what it is. Do we all agree that was the, that's the correct answer? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everybody say, say the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As you are saying it, are you thinking about it at all? That there is a tree that you can use to know good and evil at the same time. That means good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil were growing on the same tree. Have you ever thought that they had the same stem? They had the same roots and they were growing together. How will you identify evil? How will you identify good? Or was it one singular fruit that if you eat it, you will know good and evil together? <laughs> Listen, there is God's intention. Why did he create a tree and just call it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Hey, that means he wants you to know good, he wants you to know evil. Hey, pastor, I'm not the one that said it. Read your Bible. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he told him, don't eat it yet. The word is yet, even though it's not written there, it's implied that God would have us later on eat that tree. Meaning that there is a time to come to the knowledge of good and evil more appropriately. The Bible says strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. There is a time when maturity sets in and that you can handle the matters of good and evil more effectively. However, I want to draw your attention that all along from Genesis 1, all of it was a plan of God. So today's service, I have titled this particular, you know, service, uh, this particular service, um, yeah? series today's own as the plan it was all a plan from the beginning that's what i want to title it as that you, it was all a plan or finding yourself in the plan of god god actually had a plan 
if you look at it well the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 it says god had declared the end the founding the end from the foundations he said he had chosen us from the foundations of the world there are many things that you are seeing evolve today that is only consistent with the plan of god that you don't know god has a plan does not mean god does not have a plan i want you to see that even though god created that tree created the tree of life created the garden there was a reason he did it do you agree with me on that there's a reason god will do anything what was the bigger reason sometimes we settle for the you know lesser reasons and think that was the reason no why did god make man in the first place he told us let man have dominion let man have reign let man replenish the earth we have settled for other side stepper reasons and thought that that was the major reason why god made man you and i no if you look at it well from that time on when man fell immediately god started a journey he said some things right there and there to the devil. Said some things right there and there to the woman. Said some things right there and there to the man. Do you remember the story I'm talking about? Please read it up in Genesis 3. God said all these things because he wanted to achieve something. Now, it's important to mention here in this service and throughout this series that the word, the will of God, the plan of God, the counsel of God, the word of God can be used interchangeably. The will of God is the plan of God. Do you agree with me on that? Yes. The plan of God is the counsel of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The counsel of God is the word of God. Do you agree with me on those words? So they are just synonyms that we can use safely. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that God's plan is God's will. God's plan is God's will. Write that down. God had a plan. He had a will. There is something about a big plan. When you have a plan, you have a plan. Have you ever planned something and made it work? Yes. There's a way you want it to go. Am I correct here? Does anybody understand what I'm saying here? You plan to do something. Maybe you plan to buy something for your, 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 and most gentlemen that buy these rings this day, they have a plan. They first of all order the ring, check that the ring is nice, confirm the lady's size. There's a whole lot that goes into a plan. Am I making some sense? And then maybe they meet the lady somewhere. God bless you. The lady does not slap you. You know, you go there and then you say, sweetheart, open the box of ring. And the lady looks at you. And if she's a good one, she say, oh, oh, thank you. Bless it. God bless you. The ring is not the size. You did not even know my size. Huh? You know, and God bless you. She's the one that is reasonable. She says, thank you. Oh, oh, oh. And then she hugs you. God bless you. If it's the one that comes from some people, people's village, <laughs> she looks at you and say, is this what you can buy for me? Is this what I want to do with ring? Now, you need to understand that there's a lot that goes into a plan. There's a lot that goes into a plan. In today's service alone, there's a lot that went into it. We met here yesterday. We prepared. The laptop crashed. This happened. We got it up. We woke up this morning. We prayed. The choir rehearsed. Every time you see an event, a lot has gone to planning that event. Some of you just organize weddings. You just appear there. It's because you did not participate. In, so you don't know the value of an event. God has a plan. God has a plan and it's interesting to say to you, you are part of that plan. You are part of that plan. Yeah. Help me look at your neighbor say you are part of God's plan. Yeah. Tell the neighbor for me like though you have audacity to say so. Say you are part of God's master plan. Yeah. So all of what we see in the picture is all a plan. Way ahead, let me preempt myself a little, is that you will be surprised. When man fell in the garden of Eden, man's solution for himself was to make leaf as clothes do you remember hey 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 come on don't sleep on me do you remember god god the bible says that the man took fig leaves and you know made clothes i just imagine that this fashion thing has started from a long time ago i imagine how adam must have wrapped eve with some leaf just imagine it maybe one leaf was as big as me he just put it on her, her back and then put it on her front because they were naked it was about nakedness Am I making some sense? So it was like, ah, no, you know, and they wanted to cover themselves. And then God was looking at them, see these people, see these people. It was all a very funny plan. Because before then, they were just running up and down naked. <laughs> and then one day they said, this nakedness is not working. So they started. But would it interest you that God actually wanted to make them wear clothes later on? How did God get them there? I'm coming to it. Don't preempt me. Ha. See, so eventually man fell, thought he was naked, wanted to do something for himself. God said, look, I've seen what you've done, but I can improve on it. What did God do on it? Got them clothing from skin of animals. Better leather. Dried. Better than Gucci's work. Better than Bottega Veneta. 
better than any kind of designer you want to call. That's the God we deal with. The cloth, the wool was still there to give them warmth. The leather was there to give them originality. The Bible said God made it size fitting for them. That's the God we desire. That means God all along had fashion in mind. He had fashion in mind. But fashion was not his plan. That was not the end. It's a sidestepper. It's a means to an end. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So somebody now sees clothes. Ah, I say, ah, what God had in mind is that man should begin to wear clothes. You have made a big mistake. That's not the plan. We are going somewhere. That you, your car tire went flat on your journey somewhere. And you fix the tire. And the tire is now back. Have you gotten to your destination? No. You have only repaired what was a distraction. Am I making some sense? When we correct enemies of our way, we have not yet won destiny. When you settle the matter of destiny, they say, enemy, leave me alone. You have not yet reached your destination. When you repair your tire on your journey to somewhere, doesn't mean you have gotten to where you are going to. Am I making some sense? When you are going somewhere, arm robbers are on the road, and you stop, have you got to your destination after they go? No. You still have to continue your journey. The journey is still going ahead. And we are part of God's plan. So we are here for a reason, we are here for a season, and we are here to achieve eternity. Can I hear your big amen? amen? Sometimes you will feel only small when you don't realize that God has taken note of you. When man fell, God looked at man and said, I have a plan for you. He restored man and started to do something about it from that day one. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize that in some time, have you thought about it? I don't know if you, you have, but I've thought about it. Why can't God just catch Satan like this and say, you did Satan, just shrink him. Satan will just shrink and just disappear. <laughs> have you ever thought about it? That why is God just, why is he allowing Satan? And sometimes we would just be thinking that the battle of life is between Satan and God. The last time we were told that God and Satan met was on Job. If you read it out, the Bible says, God calls it and says, have you considered my servant Job? There was a discussion, not a terrorism. You don't come, you don't come. Shoot him, shoot him. No, 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 no. No, no, no. There was no bad blood. There was no discussion. This time, Satan had done his job, made man fall. But God was still discussing with Satan. You would have thought that God should catch him and say, Satan, if I catch you, I will finish you. No. God was all about his plan. Nothing stopped the grandmaster plan. Satan did his own. He didn't even notice it. It was not God that dealt with Satan. It was Angel Michael. It is beneath God to be fighting his creation. I hear I'm ready to say, eh? You say God and, and, and <laughs> you just the devil. The devil and God, they are fighting. The devil and God. You see God now use. Yeah, eh, no, 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 no. He sent Angel Michael. He did not even attend to it. There is a plan. And that's why I want you to see that in the execution of your daily life, you should be interested in the plan of God. Let me quickly highlight the importance of getting on the plan of God. The importance of getting on the will of God, if you wish. The Bible says that popular scripture, Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Do you remember that scripture? You must have remembered it from primary school or Sunday school. It says, not all that say to me, Lord, Lord. Do you remember that scripture? Can we finish it together? Matthew 7, 21. Not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. Do you see that? Can you give it to us, media, please? Matthew 7, 21. Is it there? All right, church. I want all of us to read. One, two. If you can, please, wherever you are. One, two. Let's read together. One, two. Go. You've taken the one we are reading away from us. Let's read the game, please, together. One more time. Everybody, one, two. Go. up people of God. You would think that that scripture, you know some of us used to quote that, ah, be careful for all these false prophets. Not everybody is a real prophet. Not all that said to me, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of God. That includes you too. That includes you too. You say it's for pastors. It's not for pastors. He said everything for everybody. So who are those that will enter? From that scripture, can we identify those that will enter? Who are those? 
those that do the will. <laughs> so, the heaven you are trusting God to enter is not even sure. How do you do the will of God? I'm trying to highlight to you how and why it is important to get this will of God matter correctly. So, you need to know the will of God. Someone say, I need to know the will of God. The will of God is God's plan. The will of God is God's purpose. What God intends to achieve. Now, quickly, let me quickly introduce this here. That the will of God in my study can be classified into four major zones or four major areas. Number one, the will of God for the individual. The will of God for a family or community. The will of God for a nation. And the will of God for the globe entirely. Let me run through that again. The will of God for you as an individual. The will of God for family and community. The will of God for a nation. And then the will of God for the globe as an entirety. Let me say that they all link together. What God does for an individual, he wants it to happen in a family. What God does in a family, he wants it to happen in a community or, you know, as it were, that's family or community now. So, what happens in a family or community, God wants it to happen in a nation. And what happens in a nation, God wants it to happen around the world. Please, do you understand what I'm saying at all? Yes. So, we have the plan of God or the will of God for an individual. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will start with the subject of God for the individual. What is God's plan for you as an individual? Let me say that it always bothers me when I notice that the church of God always misses the point. I keep wondering, you pray for eight hours. Listen to this. You pray for eight hours. Very important that you pray that long. I do myself sometimes, not every time, but I do sometimes pray for eight hours. I have prayed for 12 hours before. I don't do it every time. It's just like how I used to say that I don't gym every time. I used to wonder what's the purpose of this gyming. When you finish gymming, how good does it feel that you gym to go and become a, a bouncer for one small man that cannot gym like you? I have told myself that truth. What's it? Chest. Your, your hands can't close together. They will pay you 200000 at the end of the day. The man that is paying you, why not do what he's doing and get what he's getting? You will say, I'm going to go and do exercise. You'll be killing yourself. One leg up, one leg down. One this, this. Oh God, what is it for? That is the same way it feels when you pray for eight hours and you don't know the purpose. Yes. That's what I'm going to. You pray for eight hours. When you finish, what was the purpose? When you read your Bible, when you study God's word, what is the purpose? Without knowing that purpose, you will abuse its essence. You will literally think that the reason why you are praying is so that you can be right with God. <laughs> Somebody is saying God's plan for our life is so that we can die and go to heaven. That's not God's plan for your life. I said it. I said it. If that was God's plan, he will kill you tonight so that you will not backslide tomorrow. That's not God's plan. Ha, heaven. Heavenly race. I know God, you, you are not struggling to enter heaven. Listen to what I'm telling you, people of God. Anybody born in Christ is born of God. You are a child of God. My son cannot beg to enter my house. I know it sounds very good. You are not built to go to heaven. You were not born again to go to heaven. You were born again so that you can join God's plan and fulfill his purpose. It sounds very nice. We are going to heaven. What do you want to do there? Be looking at God. Or be worshiping God. You think God lacks good self-esteem? That is looking for worshippers. Somebody says, God's purpose for my life now is that I should just be like Jesus. So God wants you and Jesus to be looking at yourself like this. <laughs> we are alike. Oh, you see, we are alike. We are alike. You see, you see, we are the same thing now. You are Jesus. I'm Je is that the purpose? Now, does that mean I'm saying you should not be like just God forbid? 
being like Jesus is not an end. If you are like Jesus and people cannot feed from your five loaves to fishes, you are a waste. If you are like Jesus and people are dying all around you or you are condemning everybody for fornication and adultery, you are a waste. You are a risk. Because that is not how Jesus lived. The purpose of God's plan is that humanity can be better. Humanity can be better. It was never about church. It was never about... Tell me which church you would have gone to if Adam did not fall. Tell me where you would have spoken in tongues if Adam did not fall. Are you saying now that all oh, we are doing... Listen, and please make no mistake. It's so important to speak in tongues. Before we started this service... Did we not speak in tongues or not? There is a purpose, but that's not the end. Imagine after speaking in tongues, we say, let's just close the service. Is that the end of why we came? Ah, pastor, if you don't have a message, tell us. Which one is that we should speak in tongues and we close service? That was not the purpose of why we came. Can I hear your amen there? Yeah. God's purpose is not just so that, ah, I'm born again now. We are killing, killing. God, if I was God, I would be smarter than that. Because as you are still like this, you can backslide. You can still sin. So if it was about say ah ah let them not see no let them not see no he will take you out of this world the day you come on again because that's the safest way he left you here for a reason <laughs> he left you for a reason there is a bigger plan in god's heart can i hear your amen? amen you know i told you from the beginning in case you were not here don't agree with everything i'm saying i'm not here for a political rally I'm here to speak the counsel of God's word to you. It might not be a popular one, but please just receive what I'm saying. I've already told you, I made a clear disclaimer. Go back home, feed on these thoughts, ask God questions. What is this man trying to say? So we look at it because sometimes we just think that, ah, the purpose of our Christianity is so that we can be holy. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. What is holiness? Holiness is not what you do, it's who you are. So what you do. I say this. You don't have to remember you are human to breathe. You breathe. Living straight is not something you do because you are conscious. It's who you are. Now, listen to me. The plan of God for your life, like I was saying, if, 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 I mean, if you look at it well, God would have dealt with Satan and crushed him and said, Satan, oh yeah, enter that room. Don't come out again. No, 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 no. Everything God is doing is Allah. Even the Satan is working for him now. So I'm saying that you have a role in God's plan. You have a, all your experiences. You came into this world. Maybe you are not perfect. God gave us a pattern example in Jesus Christ. Jesus was born in a manger. Do you know what it means for you to be born outside? That the first sound you will hear is moo. From your childhood. Man, man, that's what Jesus, your Jesus first had. Yeah. The snort of a pig. The moo of a cow. The bleat of a sheep. That was what your Jesus had. That was all your Jesus had. But yet, it was for a purpose. Is it not written in 1 John 3, 8? That for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. There is a definite purpose for your life. Now listen. You might be thinking things are just happening. You just went to that school. You just did this. All of those things, God wants to work them together after the purpose of his will for your life. Some of us here, and I'm saying it again, God gave back to you in that family so that you can correct the tragedy in that family. Yeah. And like I said, what happens to an individual can happen to a nation eventually. He starts with an individual. Look at Isaiah 51. Let's go there. So the plan of God is not to get you into moral consciousness or rectitudity. It is so that he can bring you into his plan. There is a bigger plan God has in mind for every generation. When we saw God, so to speak, like I was saying on Wednesday, the Lord moved in um, Isaiah. I said you should open Isaiah 51. Don't keep it there. Don't, don't come out. Just listen to what I'm about to say. In Isaiah chapter 9, you know, is it 9 or 7? Yeah. 
<laughs> Prophet Isaiah woke up and prophesied that a virgin will give birth. I was saying that last week Wednesday. Virgin. Do you know how absurd that is? Hey, can we talk true talk here? Now it doesn't sound difficult to believe. Imagine how crazy it is. Or it was then. Virgin will conceive. <laughs> Isaiah, you don't smoke. Do you understand? You they use this thing. How can you say it's safe to even think it is bad? That virgin will give birth. And then that child will be the same. How will it happen? How? But guess what? It was all God's plan. It was the motion and the movement of the spirit that moved a prophet. A virgin will give birth. That's how today I move to tell you you will succeed. Yeah. <laughs> it will look like coincidence. But there is no coincidence in this God. Whatever God wants to do, he must first of all say it. If a virgin must give birth and it was not said, it will not be inside scriptures. You know, I was saying it on Wednesday that we are actually all scripts, members of a script. That's why it's called scriptures. I was saying that on Wednesday. It's called scriptures because it's actually a script that you are inside. May you find your place. Amen. I say, may you find your place. Amen. You know what a script is? The conclusion of a, 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 a thought, a sketch, a drama. They've concluded and God has you there. If you remember last one, I was telling you, you are very important. We have Queen Elizabeth. God was not satisfied. He brought you. Because you might not be Queen Elizabeth, but you are you. And there's a you that must fulfill something in that script. My question to you today is, have you ever bothered in finding out the script of God for your life? What is God's plan for you? Drink water, drop cup, chop, you know, life and, you know, sag your trouser. Is that all that there is planned for you? Find a fine girl, marry her, have children. How are you different from animals? Yes. I don't say that rudely, please. I don't say that rudely. It cannot, that's why I say marriage is not a purpose. It cannot be. Having money is not a purpose. It cannot be. So what does God say in Isaiah 51? Let's quickly go there. God looked at how he was going to get his purpose back in track found a man so faithful his name was called abraham let's look at it oh glory to god are you getting blessed today let me open my scripture so that i can be backed up if i start look at what it says verse one and two hearken to me ye that follow after righteousness is anybody following after righteousness here come on say a big amen now if you follow after righteousness, say a big amen, please. Amen. Uh, so you see that he's talking about you. He says, and ye that seek the Lord. Is anybody seeking the Lord here? Yes, Look at what it says. Look unto the rock whence you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit which whence you are digged. He now made us clearer. What am I saying you should look at? Verse 2. Look unto Abraham. Are you seeing what he's saying there? your father someone say abraham is my father help me preach this morning people of god say abraham is my father then it says and unto sarah that bear you for i called him alone and blessed him and increased him and increased him why because he wanted abraham to be his plug on the earth abraham did not know that he would be inside bible he just followed god he just followed God. Do you understand what I'm saying? He never thought there would be, ah, one day they will put me inside the Bible. Let me do this thing because of Bible law. No. He was just following God. God spoke to him. Follow me. And you see God there? The first thing God did to him was move. Your God is a moving God. Yeah. To thought of his name is G-O. Always on the move. When he was leaving us, he said, go. When he was going to paradise, he said, go forward. God is never happy about you being stagnant. Some of us, we get so comfortable, we think that's, that, that's the end. Never should you settle in your journey of life thinking that that is God's end for you. There is always more. Someone said there's always more. Help me preach this one. Say there's always more. Say there is more for you from this service. Say there's more for you in God. Say there's much more for you in life. Say you will enter that future. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So what we are saying in this motion and movement of the spirit is that God will begin to move you like he's already moving you as an individual. Like he moved Abraham so that we can refer to Abraham now as a father of blessing. Your children will refer to you as a father of blessing. I thought you would be happy to say better. Amen. You might think you are the one moving yourself. It's not you moving yourself. You came to this service by the spirit of the living God. You met that woman by the spirit of the living God. Some of us that are married, look back how you met your spouse. Some of us that are in this church and you are so blessed. Look back at how you got here. You realize it looked a lot like coincidence. But with God there is no coincidence. He set it up for you and asked you, will you get the detection? Will you know what is going on there? Look at David now. David came from another woman. It was all a plan. It was all a plan. Look at Solomon. Solomon was born, born from Bathsheba. It was all a plan. Would you have thought God had a plan in Bathsheba? A man that killed another man's wife, her husband. Yes, it was his plan. You say, God, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? There was a rag on the wall of Jericho. It was his plan. Kept Jerry, a, a prostitute, confirmer prostitute. Was his plan. Was his plan. You think you know this God? You don't know him. He will use everything after the order of his will. He will use anything to get his plan done. You are the one calling something bad. Do you know what is bad? Do you know what is bad? If you see bad, can you stand? God in his infinite wisdom. Look at how people get to meet their spouses. Like coincidence, but ah, how are you? Ah, and today they've done 20 years. I met Mama under one tree. Casually. I said to her, I said, it's, it's 20 years, ladies and gentlemen, this match. 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. 20, it won't look like casual. But that's your wife. All a plan. And it's so good that if you miss that one, he will show you another one. This God. You are his plan, sir. You are a plan of God. You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are part of God's plan. He is happy about you. He is happy about you. He is working everything together for your good. What you thought was evil, he is working for your good. He is working for your good. He is working for your good. Shout amen. Was never joking in the first place uh, you thought you fell that falling was for your rising how will you ever know what it feels like to rise if you never fell is his plan you are there oh lord oh lord give me my own wife oh lord oh lord give me my own wife you are his plan he knows what he's doing the challenge with most times is if we don't submit our will to him most times that's the difficulty that's why prayer is useful because prayer wrestles with the will of man to cooperate with the will of god that's what prayer does why do we pray because prayer will wrestle with the will of man to cooperate with the will of god why do we pray pastor if it's god's plan because prayer we wrestle with the will of man to cooperate with the will of god why do we pray? Pray, I'm repeating it so that you will not say you don't understand it. Prayer, we wrestle with the will of man to cooperate with the will of God. That's why you need somebody praying for you. That's why you need yourself to be praying for yourself. There is a plan. Yet, if you don't cooperate with the will of God, that plan may not happen. It is still there hanging. It will just go to somebody else. You know, I've often said, I personally don't believe, or should I say, I personally believe, that Mary was not the first person an angel approached to that they want to use her womb. I personally believe that Abraham was not the only person God approached that he wanted to use. I personally don't believe that I'm the only person God asked to say this message or start this church. There are many others. How do I know? The day Elijah felt like he was the only one, God said, I have 7,000 7, others. Yes, sir. That same day, before the end of that night, God said, go and transfer your anointing to three other people. Come upstairs. 
God, it is his plan that matters. It is his plan. When we start to see life from that area, our job is now to cooperate with him. When God is leading you, you will know that ah, something is doing me. Something is doing me. I can't explain that it is God. But at work in you, to will and to do after his good will. You thought it was casual. Never! He is a grand master strategist. Bush was born in. The bush did not born. Who does that? He knows the exact effect to get your attention. He said, this man is a man of fire. Let me show him something he doesn't know about fire. Bush was born in. He knows what to do to get your attention. Yeah. How can Bush be born in and Bush not born? He knows curiosity will not end in, <laughs> in Moses. Moses went. Moses went. Moses went. He thought he was the one curious. God is calling you. You think you are the one calling yourself. You are joking. God, grand master strategist. He will relocate you from Nigeria just to meet somebody in Belgium. Come back to Nigeria and continue his plan for you. Sometimes we think we are so smart that we can handle our lives. What a wisdom to handle your life to God's hands. Because not only will you fulfill his plan, he will reward you for fulfilling his plan. How did I find myself in this youth service? God ordained it. Why is this lecturer hurting me? When you start to see that everything flows in the order of his will that nothing is working against you that nothing is working against you instead all things are working for you 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 all things are working for you, working for you. in the name of jesus some of us know what i'm talking about better than some others some of us something has happened to us you say thank god safe even though you don't like that that person went on but thank god that thing happened yes. when it happened you felt bad though but now that you have looked back I said thank god it happened they meant it for evil for joseph but joseph said what you meant for evil my god has turned it for my good ladies and gentlemen let me just tell you something people hate you is for your good haters we hate potatoes we potate but my blood shall never dry I'm telling you, you cannot do anything about people hating you. Guess what? Some people hate God. So what? Why? Why are you feeling bad? They don't like your God. Oh more. Some people don't like God's God. Why am I feeling bad? You are feeling like you should be more popular. It is not that popular. Some people will tell you to your face there is no God. What do you want to do? And he did not kill them. I'm Robert that is smelling the, 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 the fumes of his pistol. Who gets born again tomorrow? What do you want to do? We preach more than you that have been born again from your childhood. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know this God. He will do and undo to favor his own plan. Think it's casual. He put something in your heart. You thought it's you that thought about it. <laughs> you are about where are you that intelligent? This God, He has a plan, and in this month, we'll be looking at His plan, the motions and the movements of the Spirit. How we will make a woman barren for years till she will say, "Lord, I will give you this son as a prophet." Is His plan? That one thought, oh Lord, I need, a, I need a baby. I need a baby. God said, wait, my dear. He never do you. When he do you, you go commit this baby to my hand. When he got the baby, he gave her plenty children. God of the Bible make, make Saul's father's sheep enter bush. They were looking for sheep. Looking for sheep. Where to go and tell the prophets? Somebody is coming to look for sheep. Look like a natural event. This God, you have no idea who you are dealing with. You think you, you, you because God has given you five thousand that you are just looking for yesterday. I know God. 
Oh, my man, you don't know this God yet. He will make the devil slave for you. I'm telling you, he will make the devil, he will make your haters serve you. This God. He will take you from the dunghill and put on the top. I say, be constructing them, be telling them what to do. Are you ready for this God? This God? I say this with understanding. The God of the Bible is superior to all other gods. He's superior to your understanding of morality. He's superior to your own wishes and caprices. But God, when will you do it? God. God. The Bible says he will perfect that which concerns you. That's the God you serve. That's the God we serve. for your life and in this first service it's my job to announce it you will fulfill it in Jesus name rise to your feet and give God some praise this morning rise to your feet and give God some praise I want us to pray some three prayer points and say father from today I cooperate with your leading we are coming to some deeper talks this is for you first of all I cooperate with your leading the motions and the movement of the spirit let every pain be turned into gain what was meant for evil converted for good you might be here today a gate man a carpenter a bricklayer a shoemaker a